Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I want to talk about collaborative projects and how to do collaborations um, in Ableton, but also a little bit in general, uh, how you kind of start it out and how you want to approach somebody else uh, with a collaboration, uh, which at least this is my idea. Um, this is because yesterday I, uh, or we released uh, the Phantom language, which is my first collaborative project uh, under Projector. And uh, I think it was a really nice track and you should definitely listen to it. Um, but I'm kind of going to take you through the steps of how the project started, how we kind of work towards uh, the final product. And I'll show you a few of the, the interesting things that are there. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So here we have the very first project that was sent to me. And um, what Darker Space did is he approached me and he immediately had an idea and an, uh, a, basically a finished project ready in which he said, would you like to add something or would you like to help take this finished project to the next level or something like that? Um, so he immediately gave me an idea to work with. And as you can see, this first project that he had is pretty much full. You can see it's just an eight minute track already. And um, the first thing I did is I kind of went through it, see what I liked, what I didn't like about it. Um, the very first thing that I noted is that the kick was very nice. So um, here we have the kick. And then we have the bass on as well, which as you can see is still a little bit overlapping and stuff like that. So there was still a lot of stuff that needed to happen, uh, but you can see here. You might hear uh, where that comes from. Um, so this is one of the bass melodies that we ended up using, uh, but this was the initial idea of the track uh, was to use a bass melody like that. Um, so we decided to keep that in and just replace it with a different bass sound that I made um, just to make it a little bit more uh, professional sounding by not having it overlap with the kick. Uh, so that was one of the main things I wanted to, to change here in this uh, project, as well as the overall uh, structure of the track. As you can see, the structure heavily relies on basically one intro, one drop, one um, breakdown, and uh, a second drop slash outro. And they're all basically the same length, which um, for structure, I really don't like. I do like it when the structure is a little bit more creative. Uh, so what we decided to do was add another drop so we can make the drop shorter and have more different things happening in those drops. Um, and also make the breaks a lot shorter and the intro is also shorter. Um, so there's less time wasted on, on kind of the introduction part of the track and uh, a lot more on the dancing part. And then there's a lot more breakdowns in the middle as well. Where as you can see here, it's just a kick basically all the way through. Uh, what we would have is just, um, you know, eight bars or 16 bars where there wouldn't be um, a kick every now and again. I think we have a few um, 16 or 32, I'm sorry. Uh, we have a few 32 bar segments in which the kick and bass is either high past very high or it's just not present at all. And that just gives it a little bit more rest. And that was also one of the things I noted here in the, pro uh, in the project. Um, so he basically sent me this, this full idea. And what I decided to do is I decided to save this project and then import each individual part of the project into a new project. Um, before that though, I quickly want to play through uh, some of the parts of this project and see if you can recognize something. So I'm just going to play the intro here. You can see Darker Space really had the sound design on point. There's a lot of cool eerie stuff going on, but it didn't really have the, the vibe that I was going for. You can definitely hear some stuff happening. I do have to so say though that I am missing some plugins here, so it might not sound exactly the same way, but you can hear kind of what it was going for. And then towards the drop here, we have that uh, guitar, which is um, very noticeable in our track as well. this guitar 
and there's a little bit more glitchiness happening here. I wanted to keep it a little bit more basic in the final um, project, but this guitar is in there as well. It's just mixed a little bit differently, so it might sound a little bit different uh, once you listen to it. Uh, but then here we have the, the pre-drop section, basically. Yeah, he has his kick and bass and his build-up coming in. start to recognize some of the effects elements that are in here as well. If we go to, for example, this one. Or this. That kind of sound there is also in there. In the original track, we have some more sounds here, I think. Yeah. That's also in the original track. Or, or in the final track, sorry. Um, so what I did is I took a lot of those elements and I put them in a new project. So what you can do, if you don't know, let's close this project up so you can kind of see what it looks like in its entirety. Uh, if you're wondering, if what you can do is you can go into your projects and then you can just open up um, certain projects. So now I'm opening up the project that we're looking at. And you can see we have kick and bass here, which is this group. We have drums here, which is this group. We have leads and synths, which is this group. Risers, that group. We have the fills and impacts. So you can see that it's the same project and you can basically just browse through the individual tracks. Uh, so let's open up the kick and bass. And if I put in bass high pass, you can see it takes a little bit while to load because it actually has to open up the project like another time. And then you can just drag it in. It will load a little bit more and it will just drag in the track, which is the same one as uh, we had here. So you can see that that is an easy way to kind of collaborate on certain things. And uh, what I did is I just imported individual tracks into a new project. So let's actually start looking at that project. All right, so here we have my version of the project or uh, the version of the project in which I started importing um, all of the samples. This is the version that we mainly worked on and where the whole idea of uh, the track and the structure as well kind of started to form. Um, so you can definitely see that the, the structure is completely different here. As you can see, we have the shorter intro, we have longer drops. And here we have those little breaks that I talked about. And then we have a little bit of a longer break here. But you can see that this is, this is still not the final version uh, of the project. Um, so what I did here is um, I decided to just use my own templates, use my own uh, way of thinking about it. And uh, as you can see, there are some big groups in here that uh, basically contain a full intro or a full break in this case with a lot of stuff happening in it. And the reason why we have it that way is for example, we were working on a project and I say, okay, um, I'm happy with what I've done in the drop here. Um, do you want to do anything else? So I asked Darker Space, do you want to do anything else? And he said that he wasn't happy with how the intro worked. Um, so he decided to write another intro. So that's just this group. So he wrote everything in a group and then we just imported that whole group uh, just by dragging and dropping that in there. And then um, that's how we kind of replace the intro that was already there. Uh, and the same happened for the break. We decided to replace the break at some point and um, he decided to write the break. And what we did is uh, he just uh, wrote it in the group and then I imported that group in the full mix and made it fit. And we had a few Discord calls. We had a few like screen share um, sessions in which we kind of discussed the project as a whole. And um, finally we ended up with this structure and we let it rest for a little while. Um, so this is then the final project, one of the biggest, or this is then the, the final project at that stage. Uh, but there are still some differences between the release and this uh, thing because we let it rest for a while and then we decided to come back and work on it some more, see if there's any things that we changed our mind about uh, before we were trying to get it ready to, uh, for release. Uh, so I don't think this is mastered. Yeah, you can see it's not mastered. It just has, I think, a volume boost on here somewhere which does uh, some gain reduction here um, but I mainly wanted to focus on this part because this is the thing that changed the most so this is going in from the break into the drop immediately you can see there's no pre-build here which uh, we later decided to add a pre-build here now this is one of those things where um, you want to basically keep this idea um, so what I decided to do is just save it into a new project 
Um, the reason for that is you want to always kind of have a backup if something goes wrong, uh, especially once you start adding uh, weird things like changing around the structure of your track or something like that. You always want to be able to go to a point in which you said, I kind of like where the track is and I just want to keep uh, going with that. Um, if you're going to make any big changes, you definitely want to have something you can fall back on in case that those changes don't work out for you. Uh, so this is going from the break straight into the drop. So let's listen to what that sounds like so you can kind of get an idea of why we made that change. So you can hear that it doesn't really flow that nicely into it. Um, so that's why we added that pre-built here, which is eight bars long, I think. And um, that helped the track flow a little bit better. Um, but also there we had a few different ideas or I had a few different ideas on how we could do that. Um, so let's take a look at the first idea that I had, which isn't actually that pre-drop, but just having it flow in differently. All right, so this is a new arrangement where basically I decided to just mess around a little bit with the sounds and see if I could make it transition better without adding anything to the structure. So this is one of the ideas that we had. Um, so let's actually play it and see if you can hear the difference. Again, I don't know if this is mastered. It doesn't look like it. So it should sound pretty similar despite it having a, a changed version. Uh, so this is what we have here. So you can hear that I added this extra sound in here, uh, which are just some effects. Uh, you can see a very distorted sound here. Which is just an effect that helps transition it a little bit. Um, we weren't happy with how that sounded, um, so we decided to definitely go for a different structure to the track. This was not giving us um, the, the kind of transition that we wanted to. Um, so let's go to the final project that we have and actually show how that works. All right, so this is the final project and I think this one is mastered. Yeah, as you can see, this has a mastering chain on there. Um, so the final project um, has this pre-built in there. Um, so the transition is a little bit cleaner. So you can hear that's a lot cleaner sounding and a lot nicer sounding of a transition. Um, so those are kind of the ideas for which you want to make a new project. So let's say this didn't work out. Um, you don't have to undo a lot of things uh, to get back to that old project. Um, so those are some of the tips that uh, I would say is regularly back up, especially if you're both, you know, pushing ideas um, into a project and trying to, to uh, try out a few different ideas. Um, have one kind of master project in which you're both working. And if the other one wants to contribute something, uh, obviously it's going to be saved on one of those two computers. And if the other one could, uh, wants to contribute something or has like a new idea, either do like a, a, a screen share session, which is a lot of what we did, where we both kind of work on the same project, me actually with my mouse and my keyboard doing the things. And Darker Space would just kind of guide me and say some of the things that he decided uh, upon. Or just have him ask like if you want to redo a section um, to make it all in one group so he can send me the group as an a as a file um, if you don't know how that works by the way uh, you can also if you don't want to open up the project and go through and see what you want to do let's say I want to save this break stuff into this folder you can just drag it in there and it will create a file that you then again can drag back into projects so that's very handy um, so it will create a project for you 
And if you open up this file here, this ALS file, that is just a group or a track or a combination of tracks that you can drag in and uh, drop into any project. So that's an easy way of working in this case um, with those uh, projects. And uh, that's an easy way to easily transfer over ideas and stuff like that. Um, so that's how it, you would do a collaboration. Obviously, uh, you need to make sure that most of the plugins are, that you're using are the same, that um, you're using the same DAW. This drag and drop trick only works in Ableton for obvious reasons, um, but your DAW might have a similar feature where you can import one project into another or something like that. Um, but those are some of the tips I can give you for collaboration and also um, I decided to share some of the things that we decided upon and how that went as well. So I hope this was interesting. Uh, if it was, leave a like. And if you're new here, subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.